Okay, so the first thing to do with knitting is decide what needles and what wool you will be using. And most um, patterns will recommend a needle size and will recommend a yarn size for you. So these ones are 6mm needles, you can usually find uh, the measurement somewhere around the top. Um, and this is some chunky wool, I'm not quite sure, but this is like one of the thicker kinds of wool you could use. Um, and then to start off, you need to work out how much you need to use. So usually you'll take the sort of measurement of the piece. So say you're making a hat, it might be the circumference of your head. And you would take that and you would do this by three. So sort of fold it back on itself and fold it back on itself again. And then you've got the amount. But we're going to do something much smaller today. So maybe something like this. Fold it back on itself and fold it back on itself. And then here is where you make a loop. And this is the start of casting on. And you need to cast on to knit anything. So it's just a simple loop. It's crossed over itself. And then you take this, which is the tail, the end bit. Take that and you push it through here like that. And you pull it tight. And then you take one of your needles, you stick that in there, and you just tug on these to tighten it. And you should have the tail at the front here facing you. And now that's your first uh, stitch. Now to make the rest of them, it's a little bit more complicated. You have to take, remember to have this, the tail at the front and you sort of tighten that with your index finger and tighten this with your thumb and you've got the rest of it clenched here in your fist but you have to have these quite tight and now the next thing that you're going to do is sort of pull the, your thumb this way so that it sort of goes like this so you've got a bend in it and you've just got to pick pick up the thread under the thumb and you're holding it tight this whole time and it comes up, it doesn't cross over the back line of thread there, it comes up like that, still holding it tight with your thumb, and now go to the thread that is tight on your index finger, and you just pull like that, and then you just pull this through here, and you pull it tight, and that's your second stitch. And then you do it again, Tight with your index finger, tight with your thumb, held at the bottom. Pull your thumb this way. So you've got this under there, over there, and through. And pull it tight. But not too tight, that's one thing I should say actually. You don't want your stitches to be too tight because it's going to make them harder to knit off in a minute. Uh, but then again they shouldn't be too loose either just sort of a nice there still have some movement on there like that you do it again tight with finger tight with thumb clenched under this over that and pull it through and I'll show you one more And once you've got the hang of this, this movement, it becomes sort of second nature to you. So it looks quite complicated to watch, but I think once you start doing it for yourself, it makes a lot more sense. So just have a, have a few goes at it. If you don't sort of manage it at first, just keep trying, just keep having a go at it.
Now I've just got a very small piece here just to sort of show you what to do on. Um, usually you'd probably make something that would be a bit bigger than this. This is about 14 stitches that I've cast on. Um, and a tip for when you're counting your stitches, if you want to count how many you have, if you're counting if you've dropped one or picked any up, um, it's always easiest to count in twos. It gets quite tedious if you're trying to count them one by one. So you can count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, like that, and it's much easier. So now that you've got this, they're all cast on, you're ready to start knitting. The, these here, this won't be your first row. Your first row will be what we're doing now, um, this knitting. So sometimes you're making a piece and it will ask you to knit until it measures a certain length, but sometimes you're knitting a certain number of rows. So in that case, you need to be able to count how many rows you've done. And this, this isn't a row. What we're doing next will be. Okay, now that that's done, I can show you how to actually start knitting. So, the first thing you do is you can now pick up your other needle and you push in, you're picking up this first stitch but you're pushing in behind and across. So your needles are crossed over like this and you're coming behind. And now your tail, that's just at the back, you don't need that. What you need is the thread that's connected to your ball of yarn. So you take that thread and you pull it to the back, around, crossed over, and now you take this back needle and you kind of hold this taut, hold this thread here taut. Um, and you push that down and you're just coming in under this here and pulling that off and uh, keep your tail at the back there but that's your first stitch and now for the second one it's just the same you're picking this stitch up but you're sliding across there at the back pull this around and over push it down and hook it off and again pick it up crossed in at the back this thread comes around the back and over between the two needles and then hooks underneath and this should be clean here when you're taking this off there shouldn't be any other bits of thread in there it should just be a sort of a hole and pull it off push it down and you're looping under and up pull it off And there you have your first row. Now, I'll show you a few more rows of knit stitch just so you can see what it looks like then when you just do all knit stitch. Now this is what knit stitch looks like. That's about five rows of knit stitch and it has this sort of bobbly look to it. You can always tell if you've done an even or an odd number amount of rows because the tail will be the tail will be at the opposite end to your sort of bit that's connected to the yarn um, on an odd 
number row. If it's on an even number row, they will be on the same side. They'll be here together. So that is knit stitch. That's what knit stitch looks like. It has this sort of bobbly feeling to it. And that's about five rows worth with a sort of chunky wool and some slightly bigger needles. So now I'm gonna show you purl stitch. Uh, and when you mix purl and knit together, you get stockinette stitch. And um, I'll do a few rows of that and show you what that looks like. But first I'll show you how to do purl. Purl is essentially the opposite of knit stitch. So whereas with knit stitch, you're sort of picking up the stitch, crossing at the back, taking this to the back and coming round. With purl, it's the other way around. You're gonna come, still pick up that stitch, this one here, but um, you're coming in from the back instead and crossing over this way. So it's still sort of the same shape, but you've just come in from a different direction. And then in, where with knit, you're coming to the back and crossing around. With purl, you just come around this like that and keep that a bit taut. And the same as you do, just come underneath and slip that stitch off. And I'll show you again that you're coming in from the back, crossing over, just pull that around here and then cross up underneath and pull it off. Now you can start to see how this might look, the stockingette stitch where you alternate from purl to knit, purl to knit. Um, this bit is a little bit flatter here than the simply knit stitch here, which is a lot sort of more bobbly. So I'll knit a few lines where I'm alternating between purl and knit, and I'll show you what that looks like. So what we have now is about six rows of stockingette stitch, stockingette stitch being where you do one row in knit, next row purl, one row knit, next row purl, and you see you have a much sort of cleaner, flatter looking piece here now. At the bottom here is where we still have that bit where it's just knit, but with stocking knit, you get this side that's really smooth and just neater looking, and you have these, I don't know if you can see it, but these little V shapes, and that actually makes it easier to count your stitches, um, not your stitches, your rows as well. Because, well, this is one row here, but then see there's a little V shape at the bottom of each stitch. And you can see another V shape below, another V, and another V, and another V. And you can count just how many of those there are, and that tells you how many rows you've done. With um, just purl or just knit, it's a little harder to tell how many rows you've done because you're using these bobbly bits to count. And you can usually say, so the sort of two here, one of these is usually about two rows. So this one is that's about four rows. It's four rows of knit stitch. Now with stocking out stitch, on the one side you have this sort of nice, smooth, neat looking piece. And on the other side, it actually looks about the same as when you would just um, do knit stitch. So you might see sometimes in knitting patterns the abbreviations WS and RS and they stand for wrong side and right side and right side refers to this sort of nice smooth clean stitch 
and wrong side refers to this sort of bo more bobbly one which is just like your knit stitch on its own. So once you can do knit and purl and you're feeling comfortable with both of them, instead of just alternating um, from row to row, you can actually alternate between them within a row. And what that will give you is rib stitch or give you sort of patterns or textures, but I'll show you what I mean in a minute now. So first of all, let's decide on how many. Okay, so I'm going to go with a rib stitch that is two of each. So I'm going to knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two, like that. So let's start with knit. You would knit two just as you usually would. But now because we're changing um, stitches mid row, this thread that's at the back, to do the next stitch which is a purl, you need to bring it to the front. So you're bringing it just behind this first needle and you just bring it to the front and now you're ready to purl. So do a purl as you normally would, you come from behind, do this, and purl, purl. And now we're coming to two knit stitches, so we do the same again. For a purl it has to be at the front, for knit it has to be at the back. So you'll, again you're bringing it from the front, just around this first needle, to the back. And now you can knit. And back around the front for purl. Okay, so now the important thing with rib stitch is once you've done this first row, what you're doing the next time around is where on one side you would have these knit stitches, when you're coming back this way now, what were knit stitches now have to be purl stitches. And like vice versa, so here these were purl stitches, these are going to have to be knit stitches. Because essentially you're doing very tiny sections of stockinette stitch so that you're going to end up with uh, this sort of two uh, stitch section that's sort of right side smooth and then this two stitch section that is wrong side sort of bobbly and that gives you that ribbing effect. So I'm just going to do a few lines of that and show you what it looks like. Though before I do actually I can show you, you can tell the difference just here between whether you've just done a knit stitch or a purl stitch because knit stitch you can see like before that the thread goes into this little V shape whereas a purl stitch you'll see here that it sort of has a little collar it's got a little sort of uh, bud at the bottom of the stitch rather than this V shape and this can help if you're coming across here and you're not sure which stitch to do you can see here on the back that these are purl stitches they have these little buds these little collars so these are going to be purl stitches again they're going to match up with what you see here and these have little V's so they're going to be knit stitches. Now what I have here is a few rows done in rib stitch and as you can see it has this ribbed effect. You've got these parts that stand out more and these parts that are further back. And you can also see that it's sort of cinching the piece in. So ribbing is really good for um, hats or around um, sort of the wrist of a garment or at the bottom hem of a jumper, something like that. You'll normally do the main body of a garment in stockinette stitch in this flat thing here and then you can either use just um, knit like this or ribbing as a nice way to sort of finish off the ends of pieces. Um, ribbing works a bit better if you have sort of two then one or three then two rather than two, two, two like this. but. Um, if you're doing that, the number of stitches you have has to be divisible by 
that certain amount. So say I was doing two um, purl and then one knit, two purl, one knit, uh, that's sort of two purl, one knit, that's three stitches. The number of stitches you had would have to be divisible by three. Um, so that didn't work for this one. <laughs> Um, and that gives you sort of a little bit of a tighter ribbing stitch. It looks a little bit better than this. Um, and so obviously, I, as I explained before, these are corresponding that where you've done a knit stitch on this side, those are gonna be purl stitches on the next side. But you can do differently to that. You could do what was a knit stitch on this side will be a knit stitch on that side. And what was purl will be purl here. Um, and that won't give you ribbing, but it'll give you sort of a pattern or texture. Uh, so I'm going to do a bit of that and show you what that would look like. Uh, same as before, when you are swapping between uh, knit and purl, remember to bring the thread over to the right side, um, whether that be the back or the front, for the stitch you're about to do. And actually, whilst I have this here, I'll show you how to unpick stitches because it's slightly different for knit and purl because of course they're sort of backwards from each other. So now this here, these are purl stitches. If I'm unpicking a purl stitch, this sort of collar that I said that they have at the bottom that you can see here, this little sort of bud, that's the stitch that we want to pick up with our needle. I want to come with this needle pick that up and then slide this off the end and just pull that thread and this is the thread that's connected to our yarn here and so there's another purl here and I'll do the same the little collar at the bottom that's what we're going into and picking up like that and just slide that off the top there and, and give that a pull now okay. But now if you're unpicking um, a knit stitch, it's just like when we're um, knitting them, you have to pull it back round to the back to do this. So now it's sort of the same concept as um, unpicking a purl. You're going and picking up that base stitch from before. But now it's, of course, it's sort of more at the back. We're sort of going into that V shape and just slide this Oh dear, off the end and pull that. So, like I said, into that V shape, slide the stitch up and off. I don't know if you can see this now, but I've done a few rows where instead of sort of corresponding the stitches as you would with. Um, rib stitch, you know, I've um, sort of alternated them <clears throat> and you get sort of a checkered effect, you get a bit of um, a pattern or texture to it. Um, once you know knit and purl you can just play around and try stuff out and see um, what you can make when you alternate between the two um, and stuff like that. And there's sort of things that you can look into as well, different kinds of stitches that you can do. But last of all what I'm going to show you is how to cast off which is how to sort of finish the piece and make sure that your um, stitches don't go anywhere and they don't <laughs> the piece doesn't then unravel. So um, casting off, you, I think you can do it purl wise, but you can also just do it knit wise, which is easiest. Um, so you go and you basically you knit a stitch as you normally would, and then you knit the next stitch as you normally would. But what you do now is you take your first stitch here, and you pick that up, and then you have to bring that over the top of the other stitch and slide it off like that. And then you knit another one, and then you pick up that last stitch and slide it up over the top cast it off, knit another one, pick it up, slide it off.
And now when you have your last two, you take this and slide it off as you did with all the others. But this last stitch here, you have to pull that, make it big, slide it out. And now what you're gonna do is take your bit of yarn that's um, tied to your ball of yarn and you pull that through there and then you would cut the thread here and just pull this tight and tie a knot with it. In fact, I'll get some scissors and I'll show you. So yeah, you cut this here and just pull that through and pull it tight. And then that's you cast off and you have your piece. And normally when you're cutting off a bit of thread to leave here, you want to cut a knot enough off so that you can sew up your piece with, say you're making a jumper and you need to sew up the sides, you would sew up like this. You need to leave enough that you can sew up here. So that is a little practice square. If you're not comfortable with knitting a piece yet, you can do something like this. You can do a little practice square. Practice uh, doing purl, practice doing knit, practice doing stockinette stitch, ribbing. You could try different kinds of ribbing. You can see what kind of textures and patterns you can make by alternating the two. You can practice casting on and casting off at the end.